No. Okay. And pop the J, everybody. Yeah, okay. yep. We're already partying. Welcome no to the after party. Normally, we like to start like you know, very professional, very stuffy, all quiet on the set and everything. <laughs> These guys are already going at it. So you pick a great <laughs> night to stream. I'm Jason Salas, yeah. Sabrina Salas Matinani, and we have a lively panel to say tonight. the least. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you know what? It's I... always lively when you have these two together. <laughs> okay, and Tina Blas joining us now, yeah. half a day. Thank Hi. you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank we you really for We really appreciate me. it. All right, you know what? I just realized something. I'm the only one on the set tonight not wearing glasses, so it's a classy affair. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, there. Bam! <laughs> All Look right. Your Snapchat. We are talking <laughs> politics Some right glasses. now. And All Jason right. matches your socks. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's also <laughs> equally classy are my Iron Maiden socks, so we are doing a big well rock, rock and roll on, rock on yeah well rock on is kind of the theme you're heading into the big uh, general election too okay i can't even see you right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll do anything for a joke apparently but i can't even see our guests okay um big final push you've been through this so many times as a candidate as a i guess consultant for the lack of a better term not and as a party advocate you're not a consultant just yeah. a supporter uh, but we're 26 days out to the general election, and uh, this election is very different uh, by far. And so I know that the Democratic Party and the standard bearer, Lou and Josh, they're working hard every single day to continue to reach out to all the other supporters from the Agulim Tiaco camp, the Rodriguez Cruz camp, and, and uh, certainly from the Guterres uh, Bradalio camp that we have saw is already giving a big push to the Lou and Josh uh, camp. So we are the party of the Big Tent. Uh, oh. We're very inclusive, uh. and we welcome everyone. Let's fill everybody in watching yes. this right now, because everyone's like, what are they talking about? You know, this, okay, so Juan Carlos Benitez, our very dear friend, really good political analyst, he's been with us all season, was saying, can I evoke the spirit of Google? Yes. And, and basically said, what, is the, what exactly is the Big Tent Party as defined? It's, it's the Republican Party. It's one of the main <laughs> slogans of the Republican Party. It's he the Googled Big it Tent right Party. Now, now, for purposes of clarification, can we also run this by Siri? Yay. And can we run it by Cortana for people that are running Microsoft and what else? Uh, Alexa. I've, I've got Alexa back in my yeah. office. We can do that too. So, you know, we're, we're, so, so best two of three wins. Well, the Democratic Party, there's a huge evidence of um, disaffected Republicans and in, independents in supporting the Lou and Josh campaign. And when he said that the Republicans are the party of the Big Ten, I don't know uh, what you were Googling or what you asked. You say the party of the more expensive tent? <laughs> well, uh, well, the most expensive tent by far will be loose tent, right? Well, but the but the biggest tent is absolutely the Republican Party. We well, welcome all. All are welcome. Please come in uh, and experience the, the experience of being a Republican. And uh, I, I, I have to say, uh, I still remember when I joined the Republican Party uh, as a Hispanic. Not a popular thing to do in D.C. Uh, when I joined the party. And uh, the person that was talking to me said, you know, when I told my mother that I was joining the Republican Party, she said, Ay, bendito, mijo, my little boy. You can't join the Republican Party. She said, I said, why not? Because that's the party of the millionaires. And I said, well, if that's the case, fight me. I'm Republican, you know, it's automatic, you get a million, man. It's a great thing. And so I, it's, you... it's, but I don't have a million, you know. I, I, I well, think then, Lou has a couple no, of no, millions. No, no. He's gonna, that, that's going to be his theme all night, and he's going to try to disparage uh, Senator Leon Guerrero, and I'll I, try to do my best to untie your ties. But, but you're welcome to join the Democratic Party. And if you're be Republican simply because you thought you're going to get your million, I thought you had your million already. You could be hearing it first. It could, by the end of this live stream, could we actually see defection? Yes. Yeah, yes, ah. into our party. Come right in. Okay. Yeah. But, no, but, but if you're the defector, you won't stay a Republican. Yeah. So, so, so here's interesting things. One, one uh, my father founded the Democratic Party of Puerto Rico. I came into Washington D.C. as a Democrat. And after being in D.C. a year and a half, I was completely convinced that I had nothing in common with that party in Washington, D.C. Uh, the issues that they were advocating for, the fights that they were going for, had nothing to do with the issues that I care and hold dearly to, to my life. And the people that I was supposed not to like, that they kept telling me, do not like those guys because they're evil. <clears throat> I was like, I, I sort of like those people. You know, so I get along with them. And, 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 I, and I quickly realized that that's the party I belong to. And I am extremely happy and, and wonderful. And I... Uh, try to express that to my friends. My father was one of President Kennedy's best friend, and I am truly convinced that if he was alive today, my father and Mr. Kennedy would both be members of the Republican Party. Now, well, with regards to Lou, and I, I want to make sure of this, uh, 
I think Lou is a wonderful woman. She's a great person. Uh, she's not my number one choice to lead Guam. And that doesn't change the fact I don't think that she's a horrible human being or I'm trying to disparage her from any, any other things. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to say, oh, you, you're the party of the big expensive tent, I can guarantee you that my tent is not a big, as expensive as your tent. I think basically this, what this election comes down to is issues. While some want to make it about the politics of personal destruction and personalities and not focus on who is the team that you can trust to move our island forward, who is the team you can trust to take care of families and children, and who is the team you can trust to uh, take just address the high rise in crime and the safety issues. I mean, it's very clear that people are gravitating toward the Lou and Josh campaign because those are the things that they've talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about uh, Lou having all this money, uh, my friend here is making it seem like she's disconnected. Do you have a problem with success? Do you have a problem with someone who worked hard, uh, came from a very good uh, family, who understands the kind of wealth is about how they were raised to respect others, to to reach out to help those in need, and that's the kind of wealth that Lou grew up in. And she talked about that in one of the forums. She she talked about she's not silver spoon fed. She didn't come into money. Her dad worked really hard. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear things like Juan Carlos saying that, you know, she's privileged and she has money, I just wonder why why when he or I others that? will <laughs> I wanna know when did I say well, that? I just said you have an expensive money. tent. <laughs> for those okay. of you watching on Facebook Live, you can actually scrub back a few okay. minutes and you know, and actually look look for that sound bite. You can isolate that and yeah. make sure to DM us. I, I did want to ask, you know, we did the K U A M and uh, we teamed up with uh, the University of Guam students and the poll we just released it on, on yes. Monday and it was three hundred seventy one registered voters uh, polled via telephone and personal conversations and I believe it was 60, 65 65 percent uh, said they would vote for Lou with 30 30 30 yeah. percent uh, for Tenorio and then it was five percent I believe um, undecided or right, somebody other, else other. so what is your reaction then to, to the poll me I'll start with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all the the poll actually said who do you think is gonna win mm -hmm. they didn't ask who are you voting for okay I wish the poll would have said, who are you voting for? Mm -hmm. Would I prefer that it would have said 66% uh, Republican versus 30% uh, or 33% Democrat? Of course, anybody would. But uh, I think the poll is, was flawed in that regard. Number two, I'm sort of concerned when I look at the poll of the objectivity because every single Republican candidate got the same percentage of vote. <coughs> and for the attorney general spot, for the delegate spot, and for the governor spot. And uh, that is not usual. When you have a poll that goes out, there's no only difference being, depending on the candidates because people tend to cross party lines. That's why we have so much problem with the overvotes in the election. Uh, having said that, I wish my candidate would have gotten the 60 percent of it. Yeah, but, but uh, Tina, wouldn't you say though that wouldn't isn't the you you work for the Bolsa campaign? Aren't they concerned about the numbers? Oh, well, in my in my opinion, I think that maybe the poll just it's a timing thing. It could have been the timing of the poll, the timing of when they were asked. It could have just been their opinion, maybe at the time of what they knew. But I mean, anything can happen. I think things can change just today, tomorrow, November 6th. It may be different. And mm -hmm. that's just, we're just concerned with what our campaign is. Is it fair to say it might also be, <coughs> like, like you said, a little bit of recency yeah. bias, depending on what Twitter tends to be talking about that day. And, you know, I mean, if you take social media as a barometer of what yeah. what public interest is, you know, a bunch of your friends that you see and you think that's the way the entire world thinks yeah. are saying something on Facebook and you're like, okay, I think I should go this way. Yeah, I think I think that does play a factor. It plays mm -hmm. a huge factor to yeah. me. I think the, 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 <clears throat> of that, that poll that we partnered up with UOG, I think the plus minus uh, error rate was like 7%. So, I mean, there is a little bit of yeah. wiggle room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but not, not, not also that, if you ask that same question in, in, uh, in the federal election, Everybody would have said Hillary. Oh, every single poll said, like, who do you expect is going to win? Well, Hillary's going to win, but she, she didn't win the not popular win. vote. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I so know, going I back know. to Gee, that, that, that was not at all. That was not at all uh, subtle, Roy. That was. A, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm known for uh, not being subtle sometimes. <laughs> I, I know you want to get Elite? through the. <laughs> feel feel, <laughs> feel, feel <laughs> free to say exactly what you mean. What, what's on my mind? <laughs> well, from from our perspective, we're not excited about the poll, even though those results turned out to be the way they are. Polls are wrong. Some, they're not always right. Yeah. And when you have a poll coming out showing that kind of a large margin is a lead, it kind of tends to have a chilling effect on the would-be uh, Lou and Josh supporters that, oh, I don't need to go and vote because they already won. Mm -hmm. 
false sense of and security. So, yeah, so in their mm -hmm. case, they're not sitting back. They're not saying, hey, I really wish, you know, this or that. They're just reaching out and talking to as many people as possible. Uh, their headquarters is very busy with a lot of people every day, and their village meetings, their pocket meetings, mass meetings, just keeps uh, getting bigger and bigger. So you you could see the momentum. Mm -hmm. But I know that they've they've downplayed and discouraged the results of that poll to all the supporters, and the Democratic Party has done the same, saying don't take anything for granted, and the real poll is going to be on election day. So I agree with the two of them that, that the poll is not really, <coughs> a, it could be a snapshot in time, but it's not really an indicator of, of what will happen for the next um, 26 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really wish I agree wish with it. you. You could just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really we could wish. stop the stream right now, and everybody would be like, well, you know, on Ken, the floor. I think you have some PXC gloves. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bring those out. No. Uh, we had a really good conversation in the in the in your yeah. conference room. Actually, we're we're civil, we're friends. You know, these two are I, really funny. I, I feel really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, it's certainly I, entertaining. Yeah, it is. I just like to yeah. sit and watch. I, I really wish the poll would have asked who you're going to vote. Mm -hmm. That for me is more important than knowing who do you think is going to win. Right. Uh, well, we we are working on another poll. So. Yeah, she's, and it's going to be a larger. And larger you can number. ask both questions because. Mm -hmm. Because like what one Carlos is saying, there's a tendency of people voting for the winner. It's that mm, momentum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so far that poll says that 65% like of respondents believe that <coughs> Lou and Josh are going to win, uh, even though they may have a different vote. So those asking both kind of questions are useful uh, in any <coughs> campaign. <Yeah. coughs> I want to ask about this writing campaign because um, Frank Uggen Jr., we, we understand and our sources tell us that he's planning on making this announcement Saturday at uh, his rally, I guess, that he's having in Anigua. And I, I, I'm interested to see like how the poll numbers will change or, or, or not change. Um, but the Democrats, they came out with this press release and I think it was Monday, right? I think it was Monday. And tonight it was <coughs> Jerry Chrysostomo, the Republican Party of, uh, chair, who said it was it's kind of harsh, um, kind of portrayed them as sore losers. Uh, Frank um, Uggen Jr., when we interviewed him this week, he, or not even when we interviewed him, but in the video that he posted on social media, he was uh, insinuating about the pledge that uh, before the ink was dry, these negative attack ads, you know, came out, and in also implying that those attack ads came from within the Democratic Party. So I know you, you are the national committeeman, and if you would like to comment on that. Well, you know, the party has taken the position that it'll recognize those that prevailed in the primary election. Lou and Josh, 15 Democratic senatorial candidates, and Senator Mike Nicholas, the congressional candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives. Earlier, <clears throat> when Carson and I were talking, I said, you know, the Republican Party seems to be more interested in what's happening on the Democrat side because the party had no comment, Lou and Josh had no comment on the KOM story asking about the write-in campaign. People seem to forget that Lou and Josh were heavily attacked in the primary race. And to say that uh, they're going to do this right in because they were attacked, and, and I think everybody was attacked across the board. And there's a, a story where someone came out and said that um, there's a gubernatorial uh, team that probably paid for these ads to be put together and run by foreign, foreign sources. And so, I mean, what, how that issue is going to play out, uh, I'm very interested in it. But when you have the team of Ugin and Tiako talking about how they were attacked and saying that it was some members of the Democratic Party, they need to come out and say who they believe did these attacks. And if you don't have those kinds of substantive um, evidence, then, then what else are you going to say? Mm -hmm. So given your position in the party, how do you actually, even if it's behind closed doors, how do you sit people down and just say, like, look, and galvanize the party and just say, <clears throat> this is what we have to do, otherwise, you know, I can actually see, like, a snowball effect and we're just creating chaos? Well, first of all, Luz made it very clear that uh, her campaign is going to take the high road. That, that her campaign is not going to be involved in all of these attacks, and, and it wasn't. The party, Democratic Party took the same position. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, the, the ads that came out, wherever it came from, Dr. Ron McNich said those were not black op ads, those were fact-based ads. And the, the mistake that Senator Ruggan made is he never answered. He never answered whether or not he did use his lapses for his sons um, to be employed in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Uh, he never came out and, and responded to some of the things that uh, were being said about him. 
unlike uh, Lou and Josh, they were emphatic uh, when the Lieutenant Governor Tenora said that Lou doesn't care about foster families and foster children and objected to the site where the house is going to be built. Lou held a press conference and said they absolutely have it wrong. Her issue was the safety issue. So that's, that's some of the things that you're going to see again over the next 26 days. And, and as a campaign uh, with Lou and Josh and as a Democratic Party, we're just going to be focused on the issues. Uh, the issues that are going to bring move Guam forward to make it so that nobody gets left behind to have a governor who is a registered nurse who's a mother grandmother and and has the capacity to to heal this island and uh, move this island forward well it seems like stability would be the, the order of the day if, look, yes, correct me if I'm, I'm no, using you're absolutely joke. correct and, and I wanted to say to, so Tina and Juan Carlos from the GOP uh -huh. side you know Obviously, with with what's going on with Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, you've got your own like kind of like issues is ma making sure that everybody that is is or was in favor of the Lieutenant Governor, you know, maintains that support. Well, How do you actually keep? Well, it? well that's well, what well, Jerry me, said that yeah. we have our well, own problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, let me let me tell you something. It's it's a uh, Democratic Party should deal with their own internal matters and so inside, should you. In, in, inside. But I have to say, <laughs> you brought the entire same issue about the, his son and issue right up right now before the primary process on it. If, if you're concerned about wondering why he's running or not running, I think we should all watch on Saturday and see what he says. But you, you know, we need to lead by example. And if one of the things that we're saying is we're not gonna go into this attack structure, we're not gonna go against our own party and our own members, we shouldn't do it. We just shouldn't do it. And, uh, and, 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 and there's more, if you're gonna say what I'm, what I'm saying, let me ask me what I'm saying or not saying, and don't rephrase what I'm saying if it's wrong. Because uh, if I didn't say it, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be portrayed as saying something I didn't do. Um, with, re, with, regards, re, with regards to the location of, of the housing uh, for the foster children, uh, I think Lou should keep doing the same line she's doing. Cause I have friends who are foster childs, and some of them are brilliant and smart and great kids and great human beings now. And to say that if I'm a foster child, I'm gonna run out and jump out of a cliff line, man, that's rough. And uh, it's whatever reason she wanted, that's what she's saying is her argument, that's why she mm -hmm. voted against that. You know, that, that, that's, that's her prerogative to say. Um, I don't think it was that big of an issue. Uh, I think that she's made it a bigger issue the way that she's handled it. No, I appreciate what you just said, but it was the GOP that made Lou's position on that issue an issue. She didn't go around and that say... That was a GOP ad? Yes. Yeah, there it's was, on yes. social media on Instagram. Yeah, there was a Tenorio ad, 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 ad that came out and said, ad said ad Lou said no. Or is that a Tenorio ad? Lou said no to foster children. Are you saying Tenorio ad? Yeah. So, so when you're... Tell them what the GOP is saying or doing. Well, Please refer GOP? to the GOP. So you're going to distance yourself from the Tenorio well, campaign? No, now? federal law requires me to make sure that they're running their campaign and the GOP is running okay, their so own it was thing. A so Tenorio it's, it's, is it not fair to say, though, that if a particular camp who, who is part of one party runs a particular ad, they speak for that party? Maybe. No. You can't say that because then mm -hmm. you would buy a violation of federal election law. Okay. But, but you can see where people would, would draw, no, you know, no, make the parallels. I, it's like, wow, I, you're, you're a Republican and you're saying certain things, therefore that is the Republican yeah. stance. I, I understand, but being yeah. the committee man for the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. I'm sure that when the, the Lou campaign puts a position or says an argument, that's the position of that camp. It's not the position of the Democratic Party. Okay, I, I guess we do things very differently because after the primary election, the standard bearer of the party becomes the Democratic Party of Guam. Is the chair? Well, the Not party? the chairman, Juan Carlos, but we all move forward together. The chairperson is still Senator Regine Bisco Lee, but she's grateful that she has the help from the gubernatorial team that made the primary. And that, so, so you she don't, also have a position inside the Lou campaign no, 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 makes decisions. No, you wanna you want me to finish? Yes, please. So what I want to say is that there's a there's a simultaneous um, um, a forward uh, they move forward together. So after the primary, once the slate's determined by those that vote in the primary, then then the gubernatorial team provides all the uh, assistance uh, to the Democratic Party of Guam. So you're not going to say, oh, that's Lou and Josh's position versus the Democratic Party position, because more than likely there should be some unison. Okay. Fair enough. 
Okay. So all the issues that Lou puts in her platform and campaign are the Democratic Party's issues and positions on, on uh, abortion, on uh, legalized marijuana, what I'm talking and recreation, about. on all those issues. Is it well, okay? It's just good to know. No, no, but there, there's, a, there's a simultaneous uh, approach, right? But, but you're telling me that then those but, would be the position of the Democratic Party, right? Wouldn't that be when he said it was a position well, of the I'm, Republican Party? Then, but, well, but you seem to separate the GOP versus the Tenori Atta campaign. Well, would, it should be the same on the yeah, Democratic side, yeah. but you're saying that it's not. Yeah. So if you're saying that it's not, then lose position I'm saying on, that, say, I'm saying on that abortion there's a simul- should be the I'm saying position. that there's a simultaneous um, going forward. The Is it the same Lou's position of the DA, Democratic Party on abortions as Lou's campaign position on abortion. Is that the and position, official position of the party? And why don't you explain what Lou's position on abortion is? She supports abortion. She's right to abortion. She wants no, to no, see, make it easier. <clears throat> Look at no, her platform. See, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Wants to make it easier. Wants to make it easier so that, that, so. that she's going to encourage women who get pregnant to go out and have an abortion. That's the kind of spin that we're having to deal with uh, as opposed to understanding the unique challenges well, that these what's, women... What's her so position on it? she pro-choice? That's the thing. If you're if you're personally pro-life, if you personally mm-hmm. advocate for life, but you think that women should have access to this constitutional protection, these medical procedure that's going to be safe and for certain circumstances, you're autom- <coughs> automatically labeled pro-choice. So she support late term abortion. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She doesn't support late term abortion. Absolutely not. Okay. I mean, I was a member of the legislature and I voted okay. against that as well. I'm, 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 Are you? I'm a pro-lifer, yes. so I'm fully pro-lifer. So if a woman was in a situation <coughs> uh, through whatever circumstances, you're going to tell that woman what she should do? I, I, I truly believe that you are killing a life. That life is born at conception, and there are other options and ways that you can deal with it. And I, I understand that present law allows you to have an abortion right now, I personally, in philosophical, feel that the right to life is more important, and that you're committing a murder. But, and that's my personal but position. That also, and that's my strong position. So, what are you doing about those that are living? It, I mean, so this issue runs adoption, the gamut. Adoption. I think adoption is a great right, and I think you should yeah. focus more on providing benefits to pregnant single mothers and yeah. mothers that don't have the benefits to be able to carry to live birth and give that child to abortion adoption. Because there's tons of people in Guam that would love to adopt a child and there's no children available. Instead, we have mm-hmm. daily so, abortions so on this island. this is the issue that will go on and on and yeah. on because well, and, and it's tell you what, I mean, passionate. To, to, yeah. be, to be fair, I mean, we'll, we'll table the issue because sure. like until yeah. we can get Luli on here, here yeah. to give her own position in her own words and everything, we'd love to pick this up But it's up just again. these, she's for abortion, she wants to make it easy. I mean, those kind of statements are very reckless and have no place in the next 26 days or ever. Okay, on well, what's the does, position does of the Democratic Party? Does Ada have a response to that? Um, well, my, my cat, cat, candidates Ray and Tony are pro-life, and mm-hmm. they've come out and said it. They've, they've been very vocal and open about their position on the issue, mm-hmm. and so. But I think you know what Rory is saying is that the the ads that you see, the the social media. Um, posts mm-hmm. um, insinuate things that he's saying is not necessarily true. He's talking about the foster children um, social media ad and now uh, uh, about pro-choice and yeah. even as late as uh, yesterday uh, the lieutenant governor when he was rebooked and re-fingerprinted, mm-hmm. a uh, part of his um, interview was about protecting foster children, protecting uh, life and you know I'm not sure what that had to do with him actually being uh, <coughs> fingerprinted but that was the kind of the comments well, that he made. It, it has to do with the fact that he is a foster child mm-hmm. uh, and I think that that's an issue that he cares a lot about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you look at that issue the lo- new location is on a two acre property at Barakata Heights so that that kind of move is much better than having along the cliff line where where Lou talked about the safety of, of the children and because we and wouldn't then, build a fence because we well, so would not have a beautiful view of the ocean. She that's the asked the, she, to run over Lou the asked, line. talked to Governor Cabo about that at the time, and he said he would build a fence. But she said, so I can build a fence all the way from uh, Oka Point down to Hilton Hotel, mm-hmm. and then then that's where that conversation um, yeah, ended. So, but uh, Barragat Heights is not high enough, so that's okay, but it's more of an less inclined. So Tenorio okay. stands by all the, the Instagram posts, ads that they've been posting, despite the fact that Lou held this press conference to to just quiet all of that. Yeah. No, I think, I think she said 
what she feels is her position and her arguments. She's saying, I believe that I did it for this reason. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Let that stand for what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the perspective of Tina and Rory like, as we wrap up. Um, Rory, you've been now through almost three full decades of, of politics, and you've seen the role technology's played, the way people interact. Um, and you know, Tina, you, you grew up with the impacts of social media. You know, that, that's yeah. a natural part of yours. Juan Carlos, you know, obviously, obviously very- I'm looking for loose platforms. There you go. <laughs> without, without Google, we'd be you know, in, yeah, in the dark. Literally. But uh, we'll start with Rory. How big of an impact is the chatter on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram, and, and what impact does that have on how you have to shift your tactics or your strategies as a candidate, like trying to get elected when you've got you know either people not really knowing what they're talking about, sharing articles without truly reading them, and then you know you build up this grapevine effect, or people just basically building up support or or dissent. You know, it works it works in your favor, or it can like really really bear you. And so that's the because you didn't go through this the first time uh, you ran. No, no, and that's the challenge, right? With smartphones and. I mean, you just as a candidate, you, you almost have to keep in your mind that someone's going to be recording. But if you, if you just continue to conduct yourself in a manner in which you're going to bring honor and dignity to the office which you're seeking, I don't think any candidate will have a problem with that. Okay. But we've seen, like in the in in most recent um, history, with all the controversies that come up with other candidates, it was because there was a smartphone and someone took a video recording. Mm -hmm. But um, this day and age with social media, with Facebook, with Twitter, I mean, it's an element, it's an element of the campaign, but it doesn't replace the traditional door-to-door, -door, knocking on doors, asking people uh, for support. It doesn't, even re it doesn't even replace candidates talking to people one-to-one -one and asking for the vote, because if... So boots on the ground is better than one of these, or, or 1,500 of these. <laughs> or both. Or, okay. But then if you t Very talk fair. about 1,500 likes, Jason, you know that there's places where candidates can buy their likes. Mm -hmm. So if you see mm -hmm. a social media post, they have 1.5, 3,000, or whatever. I mean, those likes can be bought to create a perception that they have that kind of a following. So mm -hmm. it's just what I what I'm hope is going to happen is that the voters are going to take the time to just look through all the chatter, all the noise, and determine which candidate um, mm -hmm. they trust the most uh, and believe in the most and has the temperament to be the next governor of Guam or the governor of Guam uh, in that capacity. Okay, and now, Tina, what are you guys doing at the Bolte campaign to make sure that, you know, you can use that momentum, you know, to, to make sure that the supporters stay focused and stay vigil, given the fact that, like, people on social media can be really, really snarky and they can take any headline and, you know, I mean, their, their opinion can change, like, in a heartbeat. I think they're just being themselves or doing what they do best. You know, Ray and Tony, like, from what I've seen and from the reason I stand behind them, I can't speak for every supporter, sure. but I'll speak on behalf of my, me. Um, I stand behind them because I've been with them when there's, like, no cameras around, when nobody's around them, and, and who they really are, like, I really appreciate. I, I love both of them, and I think that they can really carry this island forward. And I'm young. I'm, I'm really young, and I... I like what they stand for, I like the pro-life, I like the tuition-free college. I think that those are things that everybody can benefit from, especially people who are vulnerable and a little less fortunate, um, foster kids. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say any ads here, but mm -hmm. I'm, those are just things that I personally stand for and who they are as human beings and who they are to me and who they are to the people that support them. And even the people who don't, I appreciate, so that's how I feel about them. As far as social media and everything, I agree with Senator Rory. Um, you know, there are certain perceptions that can be bought, and, and I understand that, and mm -hmm. I definitely agree. So how I think that um, you get your support is the same boots on the ground. You know, you got to go face to face, door to door, and you really have to connect with these, um, with the community and the people you're asking to vote for you, and you have to make that connection. So that's how I feel that votes these days are still being um, or still happening. Yeah, Facebook is yeah. a heck of a way to control the narrative, which yeah. everybody says yeah. is like you know is mm -hmm. is priceless as far as yeah. getting it. I was gonna say we should all go out for a cup of coffee, but it seems like at least Juan Carlos and Roy, you guys have had enough caffeine for this <laughs> evening. We're gonna, we're gonna have a beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you made something a little bit a wee look, bit stronger. Look, look in, in 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 reality, yeah. often on the records, uh, I, we we enjoy each other. It's sort of it's, <laughs> we're, we're we're definitely passionate about the positions and the people. Can we get a handshake? Oh, we just did. Yeah. 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 Look at screenshot yeah. that, everybody. And, uh, there, there you go. Boom. And 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 uh, and and that you know, it's the re it's what I feel like as a citizen. You're required to 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 be involved and be passionate about what you're doing and stand for what you believe in. Uh, 
and so that's great. And, uh, and, and for me, on the issue of social media that you talked, it is the future of politics. Mm. It's 10 years from now, 80% of it is all going to be done on social media. It's generational. It's shifting. Okay. You don't use social media to talk to a 70-year-old or a 65-year-old voter because the penetration you're going to have versus having somebody go and knock on their door and spend 10 minutes with them in their, in their front yard. Is, is you're never going to match that. But try to do that with somebody that's right now 16 or 17 who's going to be a voter in the next set of elections mm -hmm. and tell them, hey, let's sit down and talk and discuss this issue. They're, they don't have time. They're all, I, I have a 12-year-old <coughs> daughter and I have mm -hmm. time, hard time. I had to ban the phones from the kitchen during <laughs> dinner. I said, no phones during dinner. And, uh, and, and it's, it seems Ouch. to be a chore. Yeah. That, oh, man, that got me right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's... it's uh, it is generational, it's evolving and it's changing. Uh, today's Facebook is king, at least in Guam, that's where everybody does it. WhatsApp is very powerful also as, as a social networking site, uh, but it is generational. And I think nothing beats getting to actually shake the hand of that candidate mm -hmm. and listening mm -hmm. to him directly address your issues about what you've done or what you failed to do. Well, we have agreement. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we pretty much agreed that this was a action-packed episode yes. and very, very, very informative. So once again, Tina Blas, thank you so much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. We hope to see you again very, very soon. Juan Carlos, always entertaining. <laughs> at, at this point, you've got your own you know, parking spot out there like oh, at KUN. Yeah, you know? My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, we'll, we'll paint it gold and everything like that. So. <laughs> and Rory, you know, you're, you're part of the family already. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. I was going to ask if we can carpool so I can make yeah. a parking yeah. slot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we need to have you guys. We're going to be broadcasting, uh, live broadcasting and live streaming the great debate. So we're probably going to have you guys oh. over yeah. there. We'll bring you, guys you guys will have the debate within the debate just with these I two. I know. <laughs> I know. They, they might be really interesting during that. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. That's October 30th, uh, KUAM TV 11. Uh, we're going to start our show at 630 and then the debate starts at seven o'clock, but it's head-to-head, uh, -head, the last uh, debate between Lou and, uh, not between Lou and Josh, but Lou and Josh and uh, Ray Tenorio and Tony Addis. So make sure to look out for that. And that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Thank you. So, so they're not going to allow uh, <laughs> any candidates to go to the debate? <laughs> <laughs> Will they hold their own to the debate? I think it should be.